Back here at Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. Welcome back. My name is Gary Digital Williams alongside Juan Marshall. We have our three feature bouts here in this second part of our podcast. We'll quickly run down what was going on so far as Nick Kisner starts to make his way to the ring. Uh, Jay Stansel in our last bout on the first podcast scored the first round TKO over Antonio Lucane. 121 in the first round. Stansel 2 and 0 with 1 KO, and Lucane is 0 and 1. Charles Clark of Dallas, Texas, he upset Malik Lofton in a four round, six round unanimous decision. Charles Clark 3 and 2, 2 KOs. Malik Lofton also 3 and 2, 2 KOs. Clark won by scores of 58, 56, 59, 55, and 60, 54. Brandon Chambers wins a four-round split decision over Christopher Haney in their third meeting in four attempts. Brandon Chambers now 3-0-1, two KOs. Christopher Haney 0-6 with two draws. A.J. Williams wins a third-round TKO over Michael Brock Willis. A.J. Williams, Cockyville, Maryland. Knocks out Clarksburg, West Virginia's Brock Willis. Time to knock out was 220 of the third. Williams is 5 and 1, 3 KOs. Brock Willis is 2, 7 and 1 with 1 KO. Maurice Winslow wins by fourth round disqualification over Dwayne Williams. Winslow of Oldington, Maryland. Williams of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Winslow now 3 and 1, 1 KO. Williams 1, 6 and 1, 1 KO. Abir Jawar won a four round, six round unanimous decision, excuse me, over Philip Davis. Jawar now 4 and 1, 1 KO. Davis 2, 3 and 1. In the opening bout, Lays Fiedler Hernandez won a four round M decision over Everett Hattler. Fiedler's now 1 on 1, Hattler is 1 and 2. Now we're ready for our Cruiserweight Championship. Little Gorilla Sam Crossett taking on Nick Kisner. Definitely a Definitely crossroads fight here in the Beltway. Bill Clancy will be the referee for this one. Get it for 10 rounds in the Kublai Division for the Maryland State Championship. Here's this from Bob Jones. Good Sam Crossett grew hair, 
Nick Kisner lost here. <laughs> Very interesting there. Nick Kisner, a bald look, a bald head for Nick Kisner. First time I've ever seen that. Here we go. Round one was scheduled for 10 for the Maryland Cruiserweight Championship. Gary Digital Williams alongside Juan Marshall. Nick Kisner went into a short retirement after the devastating loss to Danny Kelly right here at Live Casino on October 18th. And Cross with a right hand. Cross it had two bouts, one by unanimous decision. I felt they were not some of his best performances. Right hand by Kisner missing. Left hand by Kisner. They tangle once again. Tangle up against the ropes, I should say. And referee Bill Clancy asked him to break. I do so. Right left hand by Crossett. Right hand by Kisner to the body. It's right hand up top by Kisner. Kisner, an outstanding amateur in his career. Quality pro. They tangle once again. And both men being warm for holding. First minute, round one, scheduled for 10. For the vacant Cruiserweight Championship of Maryland. They tangle once again. And Bill Clancy, one separate him. Sam Cross that didn't have as long an amateur career, but best known for a four-second knockout in the amateurs a few years ago. That jab by Cross it. That hand to the body by Cross it. And both men missing. Kisner with a left hand. The style that Kisner has, a lot of his hands are low. But he's very quick for Got his size, and he makes things awkward for some of his opponents every now and again. Left hand and right hand by Cross it misses. Left hand in close misses by by Kisner. Pass heavy point around one scheduled for ten. Right hand over the top by Cross it. That may have caught Kisner a little bit. The right hand over the top by Kisner. Ten seconds to go in this first round. Left hand by Kisner. Just snapping it out as the first round comes to a close. So sort of feeling out process in the first round there. Yeah, it's feeling out process. Like we said, age-wise, I think Cross is a little older than Nick, Nick is 29. So they're maybe a few years apart. But experience-wise, Kisner, you know, he, he topples Cross with the experience. And going into this fight, going, in, going into this bout right here, we, we have, is Nick Kisner going to, going to uh, test Cross it? to see what kind of technical skills he has because Cross, uh, Nick Kisner seen it all. You know, so the thing is, that's going to be the determining factor. But we know that Cross has a, a, a good punch. Mm -hmm. And if he's able to land that punch, and we saw what stopped Kisner in the last punch. But that was only because of his focus. So we're going to see what happens as, this, as, this rounds, as the rounds accumulate. We're going to see what, what happens, you know, as far as what skill versus power, basically. 29-year-old Nick Kisner taking on 32-year-old Sam Crossett. Left jab by Crossett. And run away in the second round. Right hand by Crossett. Left hand to the body by Crossett. Right hand over the top by Crossett. Left hand by Kisner. Right hand by Kisner. That's the left hand to the body. Kisner with left hands up top. Right 
Right hand by Kisner misses. Left hand by Crosser. That was in close. Left hand to the head by Sam Crosser. Right hand by Kisner. Hands on near the head of uh, Crossit. Left hand misses by Crossit. Okay, Tang once again, and Bill Clancy separates him. Right, left hand by Kisner. By Crossit, excuse me. Kisner tries left hand to the body. Kisner thank got the left jab. Halfway through round two, scheduled for ten. Right hand over top by Kisner, that misses. Tango once again, as they both men tried to throw jabs, Bill Clancy let them uh, come out. He may have stopped him verbally that time. Cross with the right hand over the top. Right hand by Cross it. Kisner may have just missed that, just avoided that. And Tango once again, and Bill Clancy separates him. Okay, into the final moments of the second round, scheduled for 10. Right hand by Crossett. Puts his Nick Kisner up against the ropes. Final second, second round. Very tactical bout in the first two rounds. And neither man really gaining an advantage in those first two rounds. Very interesting bout. Yeah, what I noticed, I noticed... Kisner's doing a great job of, 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 of uh, avoiding some of those heavy shots that, that Cross is throwing. Cross is landing about maybe a few, a couple, but I noticed Kisner, all, these, all it takes for him is take, just take a half step back. And that's, that's, how, that's how he's doing to, to, uh, to, to avoid those big shots. And that's where you know the experience steps in. You know, you don't, have to take, you don't have to take yourself out of the fight just to avoid punches. He knows how to stay inside just in case he needs to land a counter shot of his own. And that's what he's doing right now. So right now, I think he's he's filling cross out cross it out a little bit. And mind you, this is cross his t first 10, 10 round bout, and that's going to be the deciding factor. And I think what's going on, I think Kisner is 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 reserving himself. I think he's reserving himself just to see if Cross can actually go those ten rounds. Right. Cross has never been past six in his career. Here we go, round three, scheduled for ten. <clears throat> Cross it now. Pushing up Kisner against the ropes. Referee Bill Clancy separates him. <clears throat> Kisner with a good right hand. They separate once again. Right hand to the body by Cross it. Men posing now, right hand by Crossit. Right hand by Kisner coming in. And they look and they bumped heads a little bit. And referee Bill Clancy will stop the action. Check out Nick Kisner. And they tell they seem to be okay. It's like no damage done to Crossit fans. There are a lot of them here. They booed a little bit, but it seems to be all right so far. Cross it with a left jab, right jab. Now back to the left shot with the left hand. Cross it trying the left hook. Right hand by Kisner. Right hand by Kisner. He tangle once again. And Bill Clancy separates him. Left hand by Cross it misses. Tangle once again. And let's see. Nope. 
And uh, actually, uh, Bill Clancy talking to both men about the clinchy and the holding. Left hand by cross it, right hand by Kisner. And return. Pass halfway point, round four, scheduled for 10. Left hand by Kisner. The left hand by Kisner. And tag and low blow there. Referee Bill Clancy stops the time. Crosses in a little bit of uh, time to uh, recover. Cross it seemed to be okay, but he's going to walk it off anyway and take the, up to five minutes, but he doesn't take it that full five minutes. He's back in the action. Right hand missed by Kisner. Cross it with the right hand misses. Left hand missed by Cross it. They tangle once again. Right hand by Kisner. Good short right hand. Right hand missing there by. Cross it. And once again. Kids gonna try to throw the right hand. Right hand land by cross it. A hand to the body by Kisner. By uh, cross it, excuse me. Final seconds of the round. A tank once again against the ropes. Finally separate as the bell rings. So a tough round either way. Yeah. It's just hard to score that round. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a thing where I think Kisner Kisner is just gonna I think what he's trying to do is just see see how far he can take Crosser. That's why you don't see as much activity from Kisner. I think he's he's gonna let Crosser burn himself out a little bit. Which I think with the low blow that gave I saw that. Crosser actually took a lot of advantage of that. I don't think he was really hurt from it. I think it was because he was fatigued a little bit. Right. You know, as the rounds are getting deeper. And like you said, he's he's used to, I think he only went six rounds at the longest. One time, you know, and everything else was less than that. So I think Kis Kisner knows that. So his, his strategy is, I want to take him to deep water, wear him down, let him wear himself down. Right. That's what he's doing because he's not really damaging. Any, he's not doing anything wrong with, with Kisner at all. So Kisner's going to wear him down. At, at least that's what I think the strategy right. is. I think I said we're in the fourth round. Actually, this is the fourth round coming up. Four. Round four scheduled for 10 for the Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. His left hand there by Crossett stopped the fourth round. Left hand by Kisner that time. Kisner has 27 fights, only six knockouts. Crosser has only nine fights, but he has five knockouts. But nowhere near has faced the caliber of, of opponents such as a Nick Kisner. Oh, right hand missing it by Kisner. Leaps in with the left hand. Tango once again, but we broke that separation. And the right hand, left hand by Fawcett. Tango once again. Hands are free this time, so let's see if they use them punch out. Nope, they won't. And caught, and Bill Clancy separates them. Left hand misses there by Fawcett. Halfway through the fourth round, scheduled for 10. <laughs> Left hand by Crossett. Right hand by Kisner. That lands a little bit. They tangle once again, and Bill Clancy has separated. Left hand by Crossett. Right hand by Crossett. Kisner just probably got out of the way of most of that shot, though. Tangle once again. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Right hand by. Right hand by cross it. And 
And his left hand by Kisner. Left hand by Kisner. Up inside, the tangle once again. Left hand by Cross it. And Kisner tangles inside again. Now Kisner breaks out of tangle himself. Try to throw a couple right hands and misses. And left hand by Cross it. Heading to the final moments of the fourth round, scheduled for 10. Cross it with the right hand, but Kisner throws one in kind. Final seconds, fourth round. Head to the fifth round, just a moment. Very interesting bout here. An interesting uh, round there. Yeah, you're seeing the continuous, the same, you know, continuous to see the same thing through the rounds. So, what we're doing, like I said, see if Kisner can wear down Cross it. And, and, and basically, that's what he's trying to do. Because we don't see anything uh, that's really out. Outshadowing the EV fighter, you know, because what, what Crawford is doing, he's doing his norm. He's not landing any big shots. Kisser's not getting hit with a whole lot of big shots or anything like that. And then he's landing a few of his own. But based on the activity, uh, Crawford, Crawford is winning the fight so far. But it's the when we get to the almost to the halfway point, we're going to see what happens. <laughs> Here we go. We're getting ready for the fifth round. Here we go. At the halfway point of the Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. And Sam Crossing forgot his mouthpiece there. Here we go. Left hand is there by Crossing. They tangle once again. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Left hand by Cross it. Cross it trying to measure Kisner. Throw right hand, misses. Tangle once again. And once again, a good left hand by Kisner. Cross it tried the right hand. Right hand over the top by, by Kisner. Moves in to cross it, and referee Bill Clancy separates him. First minute, round five, scheduled for ten. Left hand by Kisner. And left hand by, by cross it. Left hand by Kisner. Very close. Kisner was left hand down. Now Kisner not even approval of something he did against Crossett. Good shot there. Nick Kisner with left hand. His right hand by Kisner. Right hand missing there by Cross. He tried lunging there with the right hand. Left hand by Kisner. Left jab by Kisner. A couple of good left jabs. There's another left hand by Kisner. Kisner starting to get his distance a little bit. And to the final moments of the fifth round. And once again. Left hand by Kisner. Another left jab by Kisner. Right hand over the top by Crossett. Left hand by Crossett. Kis Crossett trying to run in time. Leap inside. The final second took away. 
And in the fifth round, Cross with a wild right hand. We're halfway through for the Maryland State Cruiserweight title. Now, now I'm starting to see Cross reach a little bit. He's looking, he's looking a little desperate now. The way he's throwing his punches, he's not sitting down on those jabs. And he's and he's not stepping with those jabs. He's just walking forward off balance and just letting his hands go. And what's happening, Kisner's gonna catch him. If Kis if Kisner pays pays attention to what he's doing, he's gonna counter some of those those uh those jabs that those incorrect jabs that cross his thorn. So now we into the deeper water. We get into the last round that Cross had ever been in. So now we're going to see what happens with Kisner. If Kisner knows that and recognizes it, we're going to see how Kisner changed the fight up. And I think that's what's going. To, he's going to change the direction of the fight. You ready for the sixth round? Here we go. Round six. Scheduled for ten. Cross it coming in close. And they tangle once again in the center of the ring. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Okay. He warns Nick Kisner for the holding a little bit. He may have warned uh, Cross as well for the holding as well. Right hand by Cross it. And it comes back. Left hand missing there by Kisner. Kisner's hands are low in the blue and gold trunks. Right hand to the body by Cross, but left hand top by Kisner. Left hand by Kisner. The left jab by Kisner. Left hook, I should say, by Kisner. Left hook. That's hooked by Kisner. <laughs> Hang on once again. Left hand by Kisner. Right hand over the top by Cross, it should say. Left hand by Cross it, love of him, and turned by Kisner. Left hand, right hand by Cross it. Right hand uppercut misses by Cross it. Left hand to the body by Cross it. Right hand by Kisner, left hand by Cross it. Down once again. Cross it trying to work his way inside. He's had a final minute of the six rounds, scheduled for 10. Left hand by Cross it. Tangle once again. And separate once again. Kisner pushing, crossing, now crossing, coming forward. And tangle once again. Final second, sixth round. Kisner missing with the left hand. Crossing, pushing Kisner up against the ropes and the bell rings. But now we get in the deep water for Sam Crossing. Never been past six rounds. Now he has not fought. Since December of 2019. So hopefully for his sake, he has been preparing for a bout such as this. You're to see what happens in the every heading to the sixth into the uh, seventh round. Yeah, Kisner Kisner game plan looks like to me the way he's fighting, I think that is his that was his game plan coming into it. the way let him punch himself out. And right now I can see the fatigue setting in on Crossing. 
because I can tell the way he's throwing his punches. I can tell the way he's slowing down a little bit, and I can tell the way Kisler is now picking up the pressure a little bit, stepping coming, stepping forward a little bit, adding more punches, and putting more combinations together. And I also know he doesn't have that downhand style like he did, like he used to have it, like yeah. we saw him before. Thank mm -hmm. once again, and as we start the seventh round. And it looks like maybe another headbutt here. Yeah, Nick Kisner have issues with his head. All right. Maybe have a doctor check on him. We'll see. He's having this one look like a little more of a difficult situation here. Bill Cranston giving him time to recover. And looks like one of the doctors in attendance will look at Nick Kisner. See what kind of shape that punch is. We can't, again, it's hard to see from where we are. This is like Mr., uh, Dr. Andrew Guidry. Oh, and Dr. Ian Wiener there in ringside. Both of them going to take a look at it. Side the fight will continue. Business seems to be okay. Maybe Bill Clancy warning both men as seventh round gets on continues. By right hand by cross it. Well, it's hanging once again. And up against the ropes, and it looks like uh Kisden might have put a shoulder there. And he's gonna get warned by. Nick by uh, Bill Clancy. Like he rammed the left shoulder right up into uh, Cross's chest. And he's getting warned about it by referee Bill Clancy, Hall of Fame referee himself. Left hand by Kisner. Open starting to swing a little bit more now in this seventh round. Again, the first time that. Uh, Crossett has been seven rounds, seven rounds, excuse me. Right hand by Crossett, left hand by Kisner. Left hand by Cross by Kisner. Left hand by Crossett. Cross him with right hand. Right hand over the top by Kisner. Left hand by Kisner. Right hand by Kisner. Cross it kind of come forward. Missing with the right hand. And they tangle once again. Rebuild Clancy separates him. Right hand missing there by Crossett. Left hand by Kisner. Trying to throw a combination. Right hand by Kisner. Crossett pushes Kisner up against both of them. Man's the right hand. Man's a solid right hand. Left hand misses. Right hand by Crossett. Left hand by Crossett. And tangle once again. Heading toward the final moments of the seventh round, scheduled for ten. For the vacant Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. See if Crossett moves in. Kisner try to throw left hand. I hand the tang once again. And the bell rings. So that uh, unintentional headbutt 
seemed to affect the kids in a little bit, and Crawford survives for the first time past seven rounds. Yeah, I think there was a little small little breaks in between time when they butted heads. And then they had a little timeout so, so Kisner can get himself together. That allowed Crosser to actually get a little rest. And that's why he came out to be a little more aggressive. So he got a time to get a little more breather. And now, Kisner, from this point, is, is in eighth round. So he only has three rounds to go, eight, nine, and ten. But he's going to have to really put something together if he wanted to win this fight. Because so far, it was Crosser who was landing the most because Kisner was kind of kind of slowed a little bit as far as punch volume. And, and, and Cross was able to win those rounds early based on Kisner trying to tire him out. So far, it looked like it worked, but he's still behind on points, Kisner is. So he's going to have to do everything he can to either get a stoppage or just totally dominate him. Round eight. Round eight here for the vacant Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. Here at Live Casino, sellout crowd here tonight. It was Jeff Emotion. The tank on the center of the ring. Caught the try to throw the right hand. I right hand missing there by across it. Kisner trying to go left hand, left hand low again. Left hand by Kisner. And once again, left hand. King once again. And they hit, they seen the bump heads once again. He crossed it, may have felt the burn of that one, but he seems to be okay. Heading to the halfway point of the eighth round, scheduled for 10. There's a right hand by um, Cross it. And once again. And Clancy warning Kisner once again for holding, it looks like. Tangle once again. There's a right hand by Cross and Kisner with a combination. I right handle the top by Cross it. Tangle once again, referee Bill Clancy separates him. Tangle once again. Cross it down, chasing Kisner around the uh, ring there. Kisner on the outside. They tangle once again. And Kisner pushing Cross against ropes and Clancy separates him. Left hand by Kisner, right hand over top by Crosser. They tangle once again. Final seconds, eighth round. Kisner's not up this work rate, and that may have helped Cross it stay in this fight a little bit more. Gets a catch a left hand from Kisner at the bell. But Cross it, as tired as he may be, does not have to work that hard because Kisner's not throwing a lot from in the offense as well. Yeah. And and that's that's the mistake right there, you know. Trying to wear a fighter down, but in the process, you got to land more shots. And that's what he's not doing. The game plan taking him into the deeper rounds is working, but in, what, what, you, what you have to add to it is your punch, your punch output. And Kisner's not putting his punch output together in order to, to do any damage because of taking advantage, to take advantage of Sam Cross being tired. So that's what's keeping Sam Cross in this because the pressure, he's, he might be tired, but he doesn't feel the pressure. There to come, the battle for the WBC Youth International Featherweight Championship. Jordan White taking on Orlando Solis. Super Featherweight Championship. Super Featherweight. 
There you go, round nine, scheduled for ten. Cross it. Now backing Kisner up. And referee Bill Clinton stops him, but Cross it came forward starting the ninth round. Right hand by Cross it. Left hand by Cross it misses. Kristen trying to back up and throw left hands. The hooks. Cross it coming across. Attack on once again. A free Bill Clancy gives him a chance to break, break clean, but they has stopped him. Kisner with the left hand. Hang on once again. Cross his hands are free. Or if he Bill Clancy will stop it. Kisner goes right back inside. Those the right hand. Cross it. Cross the right hand return. The tangle once again. Bill Clancy. Trying to get to separate. Both hands are free, though. But then finally, Bill Clancy does separate them. Pass first minute, round nine, scheduled for ten. Left right hand over the top by Cross it. Left hand by Kisner. Left hand. Once again, tangled. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Kisner with a good left hand. Solid left hand. Cross is trying to put kids up against the ropes. Can he come back with a left hand of his own? His left hand by Cross it. And Tangle once again. And right hand to the body by Cross it. He's going to try to throw right hand. It throws the left hand to the body. Just misses. Left hand by Kisner. Hang on once again. And Bill Clan is going to look to break them up, and he does so. Into the final moments of the ninth round, scheduled for 10. Uh, crossing with a little low shot there. And Tango once again. Both hands are one hand is free and the time ends out. We're heading to the 10th and final round in just a moment. But uh really weird bout. Yeah, it, it just nothing's changed really. Right. You know, it we going into the we going into the, the ninth round, I think it is. Oh, we're going into the final round, actually. And Nick Kisner has hasn't done anything to actually win the judges over, in my in my opinion, you know, so the thing he has to do now is actually go for a knockout. He's going to have to let his hands go. And I think what's going to happen, Cross is going to have to, you know, he's going to be moving around the ring a little bit more. Be more defensive-minded, moving around the ring, and, and and allow Kisner to, if he wants to get it, he's going to have to chase him to get it, you know. But I, I see right now, I think Cross did enough. He did he did a good 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 job of doing 10 rounds. And he didn't really show any real uh, fatigue that really bothered him enough, you know, to really slow him down. Here we go, 10th and final round. Right hand missing there by Cross it. They tangle once again in the center of the ring. They break away cleanly. I am missing there by Kisner. They go up against the ropes. Is cross with right hand, cross it, land the right hand. Right hand missing it that time, I cross it. Right hand by Kisner, left hand by Kisner. And referee Bill Clancy stops the action. And it looks like. Oh, some tape on the. Uh, 
on the hand of Nick Kisner. Brady sends the ball. Doing the honors there. The left hand by Kisner. Tango once again. There's a right hand by Kisner. The tango once again. Murphy, Bill Clan separates him. Heading to the halfway point of the final round. Tango once again. Referee separates him. Left hand by Cross it. Right hand missed by Crawford. Kisner with a nice right left combination. And Tango once again. And Bill Clan separates him. Left hand by Kisner. And combination once again. By Kisner. Left hand by Kisner misses. Left hand to the body by Cross it. Tango once again. Tango once again, and uh, Kisner right in the center of the ring, and they can't they break out by Bill Clancy. And to the final moments of the final round. Heads coming dangerously close once again. We've had a couple of head clashes in this bout. And Crossy just looks unbelievably tired. But he's uh, trying to hang in there. Right hand by Kisner. Solid right hand. And Crossy tries to come forward. They tangle once again. Here's him with the right hand. Final seconds, final round. And Crossy trying to come forward. They tangle once again, the bell rings and end the fight. And Crossy leans over the rope for, for uh, raising his hands up, leans up against the rope once again. He is tired, no question about that. But I don't know if Kisner took another advantage of that tiredness. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't take the advantage that he wanted to take. And like I said, he he, he took him where he wanted to take as far as the ten rounds. But he didn't add the necessary pressure he needed to actually wear him down to finish the fight. And that's why Cross Cross was able to stay in the fight. And and and, and basically, to me, it looked like he get, to get the win. We to see what happens. We will get the official time in just a moment. Men raising their hands up in the ring here. an interesting decision, no question about that. Some of the Crossett fans, there are a lot of them here in attendance tonight. Cheering on Sam Crossett. Judges Dave Brazlo, Kenny Chevalier, and Steve Rados.
Here's the holding on his hands. I believe he's one. Bobby Jones has the physical decision. He'll bring it to us momentarily. And here he comes. This is Bobby Jones with the official decision. At this time, the Maryland State Athletic Commission Commissioner Dave Shaw will present the Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship belt. The official score is as follows. Judge Dave Braswell scored at 99 to 91. Both judges, Kenny Chavalier and Steve Reynolds, saw it 96 94. The winner, by unanimous decision for the vacant Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. And he comes by his name, quite honestly, Slick Nick Christian. That's what the sound cross is with. So Slick Nick Kisner wins the Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. Ten round unanimous decision. Once again the scores. David Braslow scored about 99-91 for Kisner. And both Kenny Chevalier and Steve Bredo scored about 96-94. So Nick Kisner, after the tough loss to Danny Kelly, bounces back. He went, he's now 22-5-1, six KOs. Sam Crossett loses for the very first time. He's 9-1 with five KOs. Nick Kisner posing with his father and, of course, promoter Tony Jetter. Gets a glad hand from Brady Sensabaugh. And he's a new Cruiserweight, Maryland State Cruiserweight champion. Here's Nick Kisner. Once again, Nick Kisner wins the vacant Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. Coming up, Jordan, Will Jordan White and Rolando Solis. Listen to live coverage of the Jet of Motions car from Live Casino Hanover, Maryland on the Box on the Beltway Podcast Network. Rolando Solis and Jordan Short Dog White.
midnight. We might not get home to about close to close to Yeah, but I he sent me those pictures. Once he sent me those pictures, I'm just gonna slap everything up. And once I slap everything up, I just gotta push publish and that's it. Casino Hannah O'Meara, you hit the crowd. For short dog, Jordan White. Takes on Rolando Criminal Solis. Hit the crowd right here. Let 
Ronaldo Solis, 4-0 with one draw and three KOs. Last bout was on uh, September 7th, and he knocked out Arturo Hernandez, scored a second-round TKO in that bout. That was in Cancun, Mexico, where he's from. Jordan White, 9-1 with seven KOs, coming off a fourth-round TKO win over, over Vincent Jennings here at Maryland Live Casino. For that, he placed a veteran in Christian Esquivel at the Entertainment Sports Arena on May 18th. Won a six-round unanimous decision. So some quality wins for Jordan White. He's won five in a row since the Tuffing's only loss against Adam Lopez. Six-round unanimous decision win over a loss over uh, to Adam Lopez. Jordan White come to the ring. He's heading to the ring now. Well, as we get ready for the co-feature tonight, we've got big news out of Las Vegas. That is, Hagen Style Maryland Super Middleweight Yank Plana scored a 10 round upset win over Kevin Newman II. He lost 10 round unanimous decision. Plana won by scores of 96 94 across the board. Plana now 8 1 1, 4 KOs. And Newman is now 11 2 1 with 6 KOs. So, congratulations to the sexy Albanian Yank Plana. Who won a 10 round unanimous decision tonight over Kevin Newman? Congratulations to Yank Fana. Jordan White now in the ring. Yeah, bring it out this is Bobby Jones.
and nonetheless, for the vacant WBC Intercontinental Super Featherweight Championship. It's an eight round bout. Jordan, short dog, wide of Washington, D.C., taking on Ronaldo Criminal Solis of Cancun, Mexico. Alongside Juan Marshall, I'm Gary Digital Williams. Our co feature tonight here from a packed house at Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. Round one was scheduled for eight. Solis going to the body. And. White going up, up top to start the, start the fight here. So this is his first bout in the United States. All of his bouts in Mexico, most of them in his native Cancun, Mexico, where he's from. Left hand by White. A jab by White. Right hand missing by Solis. And by Solis missing. Left there by White. And left, hand, and left hand by Solis. He flew after uh, after White and fell down. He um, did not get knocked down by White, so no knockdown called. And actually, White was warned by Kenny Chevalier, the referee, hitting behind the head. So no knockdown, but a really interesting fall there by Ronaldo Solis. There's a left hand by that. Now was a good punch by White, and that stunned Solis. Got with a body shot as well. White with a great left hand there. Heading to the halfway point of round one, scheduled for eight. And right hand by White. Left hand by White. Left jab by White. Here to the final minute of the first round, scheduled for, for eight. Right hand by White. Left hand by White, excuse me. Left hand by White. Left jab by White. Left jab, and Solis has no defense for that right now. Early on in this bout. Left, right, left hand side by Solis misses. Another left jab by White. White being very patient with that jab. Right hand over the top by, by White. Final seconds, first round. Scheduled for eight. For the vacant WBC Youth International Super Featherweight Championship. Left hand, and down goes White. Down goes Solis, excuse me. Down goes Solis. Right near the end of the first round. First knockdown for Jordan White. Right after the 10 second mark. Sneaky right hand there by White drops uh, Solis for the cameras first time. Yeah, White White speed is getting better and better. I don't I don't know how do you work on speed, but for some reason it's it, it's it, for him it's improving. And what he's with his speed, he's puts together those using his jab good, and then just with the speed setting up the combinations and able to send uh, Solis back into the ropes like he did, and also ultimately dropping them to the canvas like he did with the left hand. Was a left hand indeed. That knocked Solis down. Now the question was, was so close to the end of the first round will it be a 10-9 round or a 10-8 round. Well, regardless of what the score is, it gives White the early advantage in the bout. They ready for round two, scheduled for eight. Don't forget our main defeat, main attraction, main event. Demond Nicholson taking on Mike Guy. Two. Left hand by Solis. He's trying to come forward now. But White, White couldn't see, but good right hand missing by Solis. And White coming back with a right hand of his own. 
Left hand by White. That jab just keeping Solis off balance. In the first round plus. Second round scheduled for eight. Right hand missing by Solis. Left hand by, there's a left hand by White. So at least with, with the right hand and misses. Right hand misses. He lunges at the right hand there, though, Solis. First minute, round two, scheduled for eight. Left hand over the top by White. Speed, the major key here. Another left hand by White. Left jab misses, right hand by Solis missing. White getting out of the way. Right hand missing by White, by Solis, you could say. And a tang once again. Referee Ken Chevalier separates him. White throwing, standing looking front, and referee, uh, I should say, Ronaldo Solis, saying White hit, hit him behind the head, but Chevalier does not make a call there. Left hand by White. White pushes Solis into the corner, works the body, works the body again, right hand up top, Solis fighting back, couple good shots by White, good shot by White, and Solis lands a good shot inside. And referee Ken Shavaya separates him. And let's see. Looks like the mouthpiece came out of Solis. Uh, yep. And it'll go to Solis' corner. Put the mouthpiece back in. And about continues and uh, Ken Shavaya warning uh, Jordan White for hitting behind the head and warning Solis for listening to his two referees' commands, Ken Shavaya. And White fakes the left hand. As uh, Solis defending himself, right hand by Solis, that misses. Now second, second round. Another round for Jordan White. Left hand again by White. And a couple more left jabs as the round comes to a close. So, again, White in control, but the speed is the difference right now. Yeah, the speed, I think, is, is going to be the overwhelming part for Solis. Thing is, is he experienced enough to take that kind of pressure? And, and the thing is, it's something on the line that, that White really wants. And, he's, and it's this title, the youth title. And I think with that going on, he's going to keep turning up the pressure because he already knows he had him hurt early in the first round. He sent him down to the canvas in the first round. And then all of a sudden, he seemed to have him hurt again in the second round. So all you can see now, going into deeper into this fight in the eight rounds, is more pressure. And I think that's what he's going to continue to do. A reminder, the Washington Golden Gloves continue at... Rosecroft Raceway in Fort Washington, Maryland <clears throat> on Saturday night, February 29th, starting time 7.30. Here's round three, scheduled for eight. There's a left hand by Solis inside. And White, trying to land shots. There's a right hand over the top by White. Left jab by White. Jabs, keeping Solis at bay. Left hand by Solis, misses. And 
Left hand, oh, the left hand missing by White. Left hand by Solis. Just raised the White right there. Left jab to the head, right to the body. Left jab by White misses. First minute, round four, scheduled for eight. Left hand by White. Left hand misses. So at least doing a better job of avoiding some of White's punches here in the fourth round. But then they tangle once again. And referee can try it, breaks it. White gets out of the way of a lunging full of police. Both men missing shots with the right and left hands, respectively. So at least with the right hand, White with left hand. Left hand by Solis. Left hand missing by Solis. Double domination there by White. Solis missing with the right hand. White with a good defensive effort just thus far. Left jab by White. Left hand missing there by Solis. They tangle once again. And referee Kench Valley separates them. Final seconds of the fourth round. Schedule eight for the vacant WBC Youth Super Featherweight Championship. Left hand by White and the bell rings. So that was a little more tame round. Than what we've seen so far. Oh, that's the, actually the third round. I'm sorry, it's now the fourth round coming up. So now the fourth round coming up. White is staying in control of this bout. Now, he did what he had to do early as far as establishing that his power was enough and his speed was enough to, to, to control the control Solis. But now he's even controlling him more with just a single jab. And now Solis is in a, a predicament where he already hurt me. He already knocked me down. He's not doing too much to control the fight. He's, just, he's only using his jab, and I can't get past that. So now, is Solis, is he, is he going to be in a position where is he going to have to step it up and, and, and put his output or, or, or take a sacrifice and risk taking some punches to give some punches? We're in round four now. We were in round three prior to. My apologies for that. One knockdown in this bout. Jordan White knocked down Solis. Ronaldo Solis very late in the first round. And ever since then, as Juan said, he's controlled this bout pretty much. Good defense and a solid jab. Now he's tangling up with Solis. And Rafi Kenshvai separates him and warns uh, Solis for the push. Now Solis trying to be more active getting inside Uh White's jab. Right hand over top by White. Just grazes Solis. Left hand by Solis. Right hand misses inside by Solis. Left hand by Solis. By White, excuse me. Solis trying to double left hand. Left hand by Solis. There's left hand. Both men land left hands that time. And White trying to dodge out of Solis's charges. The way of Solis charge, you say. Left hand by White.
Heading to the halfway point around four, scheduled for eight. So he's missing with the right hand. White just can't touch him. Right hand over the top by White. Right hand to the body by Solis. And White man playing, but we're back here. And the left right hand by White, but Solis, I guess, tangled with the feet of White and no knockdown. And a timeout called. And Ken Chevalier goes to warn uh, Jordan White. Couldn't tell what the infraction might have been. What a warning was about. Left hand by White and Solis wondering why White is holding on to him like this. Left hand by White. Right hand missing by Solis. And the right hand by Solis lands a little bit on White that time. Right hand missing there by White. Left hand by White. So he tries right hand in close. His left jab by White. That's been one of the big keys of this bout so far. Both men changing left hands. Final seconds of the fourth round. Scheduled for eight. The left hand there by White in close. And the bell rings halfway through for the WBC Youth Super Featherweight International title. Yeah, Solis is trying to put some looping shots together, which he shouldn't be doing because he's, he's opening up for, for, for the jab for White. Uh, making it very easy for him. Because if when he loops those shots, all jab, all White has to do is come straight with the jab and come right down the pipe. And what's going to happen, Solis is going to overstep one of those, those looping shots. And all, all White has to do is just step to the side a little bit and land that, land that jab straight down the pipe, and this fight could be over. Main event still to come. DeMond Nicholson taking on Mike Guy. Ready for round five, scheduled for eight. Five skits for eight. Right hand over top, missing there by White. Jordan White, nine and one. With nine and one with seven KOs for Jordan White. Hey. And good right hand by Solis that time. Okay, okay. Over the top by Solis. Right hand over the top by White. Solid right hand there. White missed with the left uppercut. Right hand to the body by Solis. Left hand missing there by Solis. Left hand by White missing. Heading to the halfway point of the fifth round. Scheduled for eight. Left hand missing by White. White has lost a little bit of his accuracy in this bout. White trying to land the left jab. Right hand by Solis that time. White took it well, it looks like. Both men changing left jabs. Left hand by White. Right hand pushes uh, Solis down, but it was a push. No knockdown. Called by Kenny Chevalier. That was a push. Not a knockdown. Not a punch. His right hand. Oh, oh, wicked right hand by Solis, but a nice right hand return by White. And until the final moments of the, of the round. 
Six rounds, scheduled for eight. Right hand by White. Left hand by Solis. Wondering why there's no uh, infraction called against uh, White for measuring his punches. Left jab by White. Left hand by White. Final seconds of the round. And Solis tries to chase White as the round comes to an end. And White saying something. Sean pointing to a logo on his on his uh, trunks. I don't know exactly what that logo was though. They're down to the sixth round. White White is doing some good foot movement along with the jab also because he's getting himself out of some trouble when when Solis tries to put pressure on him, he, he's able to step aside. And, 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 and actually, Kenny Chevalier is doing an excellent job calling this fight, you know, because even with a punch, it was a, a push at the end of that punch that made him go down twice in the round, once in the first round and then again in the fifth. So, you know, Kenny's getting a good observation, you know, uh, refereeing this fight. Get ready for the sixth round. Get for eight. Left jab by White. Right hand over the top by White. Left jab. Uh, good right hand by White. Both men out going toward the toe, but White's getting the better of it, it looks like. The left hand there. The left jazz by White. Right hand over the top by White. Right hand misses by White, by uh, Solis. White southpaw going with left hand. So jab by, by White. And that may have had it. Right hand. Oh, good left hand by White. Left jab by Solis, then right hand by White. Hang on once again. The left jab by Solis, missing with the right uppercut. Left jab by, Sol by White. Right hand over the top by, Sol by White over Solis. Solis tries to wake it up a cut. Left hand by Solis. By White and White going back and forth between conventional and southpaw in this round. Right hand by White. White hits Solis in the back of the head. And Solis looks a little fuddled here. There's a left jab by, Sol by White. This is by with a wild right hand. Left jab by White. In the black trunks with the gold trim, right hand to the body by White. Sweets in the colors of Mexico. White going back and forth, trying to throw left hand. They tangle once again. And Kane Chevalier separate them. Right hand by White. Final second, six rounds, get it for eight. For the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental International Super Featherweight title. Intercontinental Featherweight title. Heading to the seventh round. 
And White looked back on his game, really on his game to have six round though. Yeah, he's back to moving. He's back to sticking with the jab. And he's back to get some good defense. And he's keeping his guards tight also. So, And um, one thing Solis, I, I noticed he's doing very wrong, is trying to throw an uppercut standing straight up as his first punch. And that's not going to work at all. He's going to get countered with a check, uh, a check hook or something like that, or, or another right hand from, or left hand from, uh, from White. He, so he shouldn't, he shouldn't try to throw that punch. He should try to use that punch as, a, as his third punch off a combination. In round seven. That is for eight. Bacon Youth Intercontinental Super Featherweight title on the line, WBC version. Raymond Solis, and left hand counter by Jordan White, and down he went. Down goes Solis. Solis is up, count of six, eight, and that's it. They're going to call the fight right here, and Jordan White wins his first pro title. WBC Intercontinental Super Bowl Championship. Solis just stands right in front of Ken Valier. Now he starts to argue a little bit. But Chevalier saw something and said Solis could not continue. So Jordan, short dog, dog white, wins the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Bowl Championship. Right, right hand looks like. Everybody. And a chance of short dog here at Live Casino. Get a physical time making out this following Jones, but it was early in that seventh round. No, what's left? What's left hand? Was a left hand because he countered Solis' right hand with a left hand of his own. Was a left hand. So Jordan White raises back at the ten and one, eight KOs. The seventh round TKO. Hit this Bobby Jones pitch the decision. Jordan Fifteen seconds of the seventh round. Jordan White knocks out Rondo Solis and wins the WBC Youth International Super Fairway Championship, which should mean. And it should be a top ranking and maybe in the top 20, top 15 for Jordan Short Dog White. The BC supervisor, Lee Peters, in attendance. He puts the belt over the shoulders of Jordan White. And he'll probably talk to the crowd from Discombobulating Jones. Man, first I want to thank God, man. I want to thank God, man. I want to thank you, good shout out to my pop. Everybody that sponsored us, RSC, GFC, Salvador, Mr. Ross, and my team So 
Jordan White takes it. 15 oh, seconds. So, Jordan White wins 15 seconds of the seventh round. Our main event comes up your way. Demar Nicholson versus Mike Guy. You're listening to live coverage of the Jetta Promotions card from Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland on the Box on the Beltway Podcast Network. Do you guys want to do interviews after this? I wouldn't mind, yeah. Uh, uh, Demar, Jordan, and Nick here. All right, thanks. Okay. okay, great. A round of applause. Who would like to see Rolando Solis back here fighting again? A round of applause. He deserves it. Here at Live Casino, Hanover, Maryland. Main event coming up. My guy coming to the ring. 30, 39 years of age. A regular 12 and 4, one draw and five KOs. He's won his last three bouts, including an eight round fifth decision win over Dennis Mama's boy Duglin on November 15th. Won an eight round split decision there. Has gone 10 rounds, won 10 round unanimous decision over 11 and 1, Eric Moon. 
on the, on September 28th in Atlanta, Georgia. Also won a six round uh, split decision win over Marco Delgado. That was on May 10th at Sacramento, California. Immediately following the end of this bell, we'll have our post fight wrap up show. Hope we get some interviews with some of our boxers here tonight. My Nicholson making may make his way to the ring. He's 22, 3 and 1, 20 KOs. So that loss to Jesse Hart back in April 2018. He's won four straight. Three of them being at, at Maryland Live Casino, Live Casino, on August eighth of twenty eighteen. August eighteenth, twenty eighteen, scored a six round knockout of Isaac Rodriguez. He won a minor belt with that. Also, he defended that title against Fernando Castaneda. That was on December eighth of twenty eighteen at uh, AC Jordan Arena, Bowie State University in Bowie, Maryland. Came back to Hanover Live Casino. March 8th, scored a first round knockout of Justin Niccolo, who's here tonight, by the way. And then won an 8 round unanimous decision over Devon Lee on October 18th at Live Casino after he suffered some issues with kidney failure. And was very touch and go for a little bit for Ma uh, Nicholson. But he seemed to be back in good shape. Trying to make his way into the ring. Nicholson make his way through the crowd. Check him out when you're ready for our ring announcer. Oh. Bill Clancy will do this, will be the referee for this bout. And it goes to ring announcer, the birthday man. Just a moment. Bring it out to the birthday man, DC Boxing Hall of Famer, the one and only Discombobulating Jones. General promotion, proudly present our feature about the evening in the new hall here at Maryland Live Casino, a section by the Maryland State Athletic Commission, Executive Director Patrick Pinella. And so, from what was in front of a sold out crowd, we now come to our main event in a moment of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, it's time to bring the noise. Boxing fans, are you ready to do this? Then let's step to this. Two rounds or less of world-class boxing in the middleweight division. When the bell rings, the man controlling the mayhem in the middle, internationally renowned referee, Bill Clancy. Introducing the principals first. Find out the blue corners were in the grand black trunks. He weighed in at a cop diesel, 166 pounds. His professional record, 12 victories, 4 defeats, 1 draw with 5 KOs, 
and he comes to us with credentials. He is the reigning American Boxing Federation, Continental America Super Middleweight Champion, all the way from Sacramento, California, West Side. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike, the Menace God. And as a point of fact, the red corner, he's wearing the black, white, and gold trucks. He weighed in at a long and strong. For the National Kidney Foundation, which gave him a new final life. From Royal Maryland, here is the man, the best man in the world, the best man in the world. All right, gentlemen, we got the rules earlier. Scheduled for 10 rounds. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself. You must obey my commands. Come on, you're a little high, so punch your stick. Okay? He's perfect. Yours above the line. Just my good luck, not less. Ten rounds or less. Middle eight. Here we go. DeMond, the best at Nicholson. They're lying in this big card here at Live Casino Hanover, Maryland, and New Hall. Alongside Juan Marshall, I'm Gary Digit Williams. Thank you so much for staying with us all throughout the evening on both our podcasts here from Live Casino. Round one, scheduled for ten. Ron Nicholson will start to the left hand to the body. Guy trying to chase uh, Nicholson out on the, around the ring here. He's staying on the inside. Nicholson on the outside, moving to his right. Right hand by Nicholson. Left hand by Guy. Right hand, and he, oh, he tackles, a guy tackles Nicholson up against the ropes. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Nicholson. Heading to the halfway point of round one, scheduled for 10. Right hand by Guy. Right Nicholson, excuse me. Right hand by Nicholson. Heading to the final minute of the first round. Scheduled for 10. Right hand by Nicholson. Right hand to the body by Nicholson. Left hand to the body by Nicholson. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Guy missing. Inside the final minute of the first round, scheduled for 10. Left hand bothered by Nicholson. Final seconds, first round, scheduled for 10. Kind of feeling out process, both men being paid, very patient. Ladies and gentlemen, in the house tonight, we also have one of the leading sportspersons for a fatherhood, 
locally and nationally. Helping our boys to become responsible men. This is Dave Smith in the house. Where are you, Dave Smith? So, heading up to the second Smith round here. And a very, uh, very interesting round. Both men kind of feeling each other out there. Yeah, definitely a fill out round for each other. Uh, Nichols and Nichols are known to taking his time in you know the early rounds. Uh, he's known for actually doing a lot of going to the body with his jab. You know, going low with his jab to the body. See how his opponent reacts to it. And a lot of times, fighters what they do they try to offset their opponents with going to the body, going to the body, to get them to drop their drop their guard down a little bit. And then they come out the next round, bang to the body, and they come upstairs. So I think that's what Nichols is trying to do right now. Did you solid body shots in the first round? Round two. Round two is scheduled for ten. Nicholson staying on the outside, moving back and forth from left to right. Time to a left hand, right hand, and Nicholson slips and falls. No knockdown. They slipped on the logo, on the live logo. Plus, all the boxes have been there tonight. We had a number of bouts here, so got a little slippery there. Left hand by Nicholson. Left hand to the body by Nicholson. Just missing the right hand. Left hand by Guy. Guy tries to get Nicholson through the ropes. They tangle. And referee Bill Clance has separate them. Guy missing with the, first, with the left hand. Nicholson now moving to his right. Trying to look for an opening. There's right hand by Nicholson to the face. Right hand by Guy over the top. And Nicholson got out of the way. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Guy. Guy puts Nicholson against the rope. And Bill Clancy separates him verbally. <clears throat> right hand missing there by Nicholson. Nicholson tried to throw the left jab. Pass halfway point around two, scheduled for ten. Left hand by Nicholson. Guy throws the left hand and smothers his own punch by moving inside with Nicholson. Left hand by Guy. Guy trying to throw right hand up against Nicholson's head. They tangle once again. And referee Bill Clancy separates him. Inside the final minute of the second round, scheduled for 10. And they tangle once again. And Guy pushes Nicholson off. Again, neither one throwing a lot of offense in the second round. Guy missing with a right hand. Final seconds in the second round. Guy with a little awkward style, giving Nicholson a little bit of issues here as he finished two. Yeah, Nicholson slowly but surely trying to ease in a little closer. So after after using his jab to set up a few combinations, you know, and 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 what he does with that is try to try to add a little more power and slowly break that guy down a little bit. But guy, he's a fighter that's been in the ring with a lot of tough fighters. So I don't think that's a, a real a big issue for him. But the thing is, he's a, sh a little shorter fighter. And he's going to have to overcome the jab that Nicholas is throwing out there. And that's going to be the total tale of the fight, I think. Of course, Calvin Ford, Kenny Ellis working with... Uh... Von Nicholson along with Nicholson's father Will in the corner. Get ready for 
for the third round. Let's get it for 10. Here we go. Right hand over the top by Nicholson. Guy with the left hand. Rope against the ropes, and referee Clancy separates him. He tries to. There he goes. Guy tries to force his way in. And they tangle once again. Referee Clancy separates him. Left hand by Nicholson. Tangle once again. And once again, Guy just just barreling into Nicholson right here. And Nicholson born for holding. That's interesting. Up hand by Nicholson. That land, but Guy comes back. Back throwing right hands against the Hey, the guard of uh, Nicholson. Nicholson doing a good job with defense. Mm -hmm. They tangle once again. And they separate on their own that time. Heading to the halfway point of round three. Scheduled for 10. Left hand by Nicholson. On the left hand. And the guy smothers him just a little bit. And up against the ropes. But Nicholson pushes his way out. And Tango once again. That time, Guy ends up behind Nicholson. And referee Clancy stops it. Right hand by Nicholson. That didn't land flush, but it came close. And to the inside a minute to go in the third round. Scheduled for 10. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand over the top. Just missed by Guy. Missed Mike Guy. Left hand by Nicholson. They tangle once again. Tangle inside. And referee Clancy separates him. Less than a minute to go in the third round. Scheduled for 10. Guy with the right hand. And Tango once again. Guy leaps into the face of Nicholson as a second tick away in his third round. As round in, Mike Guy is not going to make this easy with DeMond Nicholson here. Yeah, he's moving in close. And I think he's going to try to tie him down a little bit because he's a strong fighter. And, and physique-wise, he's a shorter fighter. So he has no other option but to move in close to try to smother uh, DeMond Nicholson's uh, punches, which he's doing. He's, he's kind of smothering his punches a little bit. DeMond is going to have to take, take a half step back and, and start using that jab more. And when he throws that jab, he has to step. That's when he needs to step in and start putting some combinations together and start actually working the body of, uh, of God. He, need to, he did a good job of working the body with his jab in the opening round. But he needs to now. He needs to set up in these later rounds. Start setting up the, uh, using the jab to set up harder body shots with using some more angles to keep guy off balance. Round four, number ten. Left hand by Nicholson and close. Right hand over the top by Nicholson. Set that off the jab that time.
Left hand missing by Nicholson. First minute, round four. Right hand by Nicholson on the face of God. God misses with the right hand. God pushing Nicholson up against the ropes. Bill Clancy separates him. Left hand by Nicholson. Left hand. Left hand by Nicholson. Left jab by Nicholson. Halfway through round four. Pushing Nicholson, looking guy back. Tangle once again. And referee Clancy stops him. Doesn't physically stop him. Doesn't separate him. He will verbally separate him. He'll do so. Guy with the left hand. Tangle once again. Hands are free. Left jab by Nicholson. Right hand by Guy. <clears throat> Left hand by Nicholson. And right hand by Guy. And Nicholson gets out of the way. Head to the final moments of the third round, scheduled for uh, 10 for 10. And right hand, and there's left hand by Guy at the bell. So, and he had another uh, interesting round here in this bout as they finished round four. Yeah, what I what I noticed in that round, Nicholson needs to Nicholson needs to actually start doubling up the jab. Now he he was good with using a single jab to set everything else earlier, but now when, when you're doing that with opponents, they they could they adjust quick to that and they know how to slip those punches. So now he has to double the jab and then he needs to slide to either the right or the left and then come with something else, you know, to add along with that. And that's what guys used to. He's so now. Nicholas is going to have to mix it up. He's going to have to hit, hit guys something where he's not expecting. So you see, Nicholas, he's just throwing the one punch a lot. Throwing the jab, he'll move and not throw anything else. So now he needs to double the jab and then come up with another uh, right hand. We need to come with his right hand and then follow it up with a hook. And that's what he needs to add to it. So now there needs to be a full punch combination. You know, so that's that's what he needs to put together going into this round. Round five, round five scheduled for ten. This single jab for Nicholson, single jab. Right hand over the top by Nicholson. Right hand by Guy. Guy trying to come in close. Nicholson with the defense. Right hand by Nicholson. And Nicholson, a uh, guy trapped Nicholson inside. Right hand by Nicholson, by Guy, I should say. Guy coming close, Nicholson. Getting bad up against the ropes. First minute, round five, scheduled for ten. And underneath by, by both men. And tang up against the uh, blue corner where Guy's corner is. And they tangle once again. Here's Nicholson right hand. Right hand by Guy though. Guy with a couple of body shots. They tangle up again against the ropes. And left hand by Nicholson. Right hand close by Nicholson. There's left hand by Guy. Right 
Left hand, right hand by Nicholson. And Guy trying to throw a combination. Right hand by Nicholson. And Guy trying to throw some shots in return. Right hand, left hand by Nicholson. Another left hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Nicholson. Guy trying to throw right hand of his own. Heading to the foul. Seconds to the fifth round. Scheduled for 10. Right hand once again by Nicholson. Guy just hanging on. Gang, guy already looking like he wants to survive. Final second, fifth round. Get it for 10. And the round comes to an end. They said in part of a big couple of months coming up here in the Beltway. Saturday, March 14th, we'll be at the MGM National Harbor Casino, Oxon Hill, Maryland. James Kirkland versus Mark Antony, Anthony Hernandez. Number of Beltway boxes on that card. Kobe Abridi, Devontae Speed Rawls, and Mia Killaby Ellis. Saturday, March 28th, the American Recreation Center in Southeast Washington, D.C. Card led by Tierra Brown, Darren Sweet Tay Williams, Mike Silverback Balligan, and the debuting Manzabori Conde. Friday, April 17th, we're back in the MGM with uh, Regis Pogre taking on Maurice Hooker, Luke Campbell versus Javier Fortuna for the vacant WBC lightweight title, and for the unified women's welterweight title. To see your break house taking uh, Justin McCaskill. And on Saturday, April 25th, we're back at Adult Sportsplex in Vienna, Virginia. Mac Allison, the fourth, um, Dante Cox, and others at that card there. Round six was scheduled for 10. Gary Digital Williams alongside Juan Marshall. Watching Demon Nicholson out of Laurel, Maryland. And Laurel, and goes, goes down courtesy of a right hand. By my guy. He got caught with a very good right hand by my guy. And down goes Demond Nicholson. He gets up a count of eight. Fancy says okay. But one knockdown by 39 year old Mike Guy. May have changed the force of this bout. And Nicholson may be in a little bit of trouble. As Guy trying to press the issue in the sixth round. Right hand by Nichols, by Guy. Nicholson now in his way has to hang on. And Nicholson now back up his ropes and Guy lands the right hand once again. Nicholson going back and forth. Left hand by Guy. And Guy just barrel in on Nicholson. And Guy has just changed the comp the uh, composure of this bout. Complexion of this bout, I should say. As he knocks down Nicholson early in the sixth round. A combination. Yeah, and Guy trying to press the issue. Nicholson seems to be okay. The right hand by Nicholson. That gets Guy going the other way. Left hand by Guy, though. He's pressing the issue. And tangle once again. And there's a the right hand again by Guy. Right hand to the body by Nicholson. Guy missing with the right hand. Hey, into the final seconds of the sixth round. One knockdown in the sixth round for Mike Guy. Out of Sacramento, California. And 
Guy trying to barrel in. Good left hand by Guy. And Guy trying to find a way. Another right hand. And his, oh, Nicholson had his hands up that time. What an interesting change of events there. As my guy drops Demond Nicholson in the sixth round with a right hand over the top. So Demond Nicholson was pretty much in control the bulk of this bout. And a little hiccup in that sixth round. We'll see how he, how he responds after the sixth round. Heading to round seven, scheduled for ten. Round seven of the scheduled ten. Round seven on ten. Nixon staying on the outside. Let's see how Nicholson responds. Seems to be in good shape though right now. And both men missed their shots and they tangle once again. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Nicholson. And Guy trying to throw right hand. Nicholson trying to throw left left jabs. Halfway through round seven, scheduled for ten. Guy trying to cut off Nicholson in the corner. He's in the blue corner. Now Nicholson moves out to his left. Ben changing jabs at the left hand by Nagai and another right hand by Guy. And Nicholson is backed up because of the left hand. Guys coming in in front of Nicholson and landing some good shots in that exchange. Left hand missing by Guy. And Guy becoming the aggressor in the second half of this round. Taking his bout, I should say. And Nicholson not having a lot of offense in the second half of this round. Or in the second half of the bout. I can't miss in there by... Guy and referee Bill Clancy gets him separate. Final second, seventh round. Again, about to change in direction. Nicholson do enough with the jab. And then in the second half of the bout, Guy has been more the aggressor. He knocked down Nicholson in the sixth round and uh, put himself back into the bout. Yeah, he did. With, with a, that's a confidence builder for a fighter. You know, that was pretty much behind going into the sixth round. And to come out early on in that round and be able to drop your opponent to the canvas and get him an eight count, you know, it builds his confidence. So now he's going to be a little more aggressive. And he's going to start throwing a little more, taking more risk, I'm going to say. He's going to start taking more risk with DeMond Nicholson. The only thing he, the guy has to do now is be defensive-minded while he's using his offense. So DeMond, what he has to do, he has to put some combinations together. Like I said, he has to start doubling up on his jab. And that's what he didn't do and was able to, and that's what made uh, Guy follow up with a right hand over top of Nicholson's jab. 
And when he did that, that, that sent Nicholson to the ground canvas because normally when a fighter throws a jab, he's not expecting to come a, a punch to come immediately back at him like it did and, like, and got capitalized off of him. Round eight, scheduled for 10. Right hand by Guy. And he's smothering Nicholson. He's throwing a couple shots to the body. Nicholson handling, hanging on a little bit. Now he gets away. And Guy steps back. Guy trying to cut the ring off on Nicholson. Right hand by Nicholson. Nicholson won back with pretty much the, bu the bulk of the second half of the bout. The right hand by Guy. Another right hand by Guy. Just missing. But he's got Nicholson really on the defensive. And he has not put out a lot of output in the second half of the contest. Nicholson tried the right hand there, that missed. Left hand by Nicholson. Now Nicholson trying to throw some offense, but Guy puts him right back. He's right back on him. And to the halfway point of the eighth round. Nicholson up against almost in the corner, in blue corner. Now he moves out to his left. But Demon Nicholson's output is decreasing substantially in this bout. And question: Did it happen in time for God to maybe pull out an upset here? Right hand by. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? How you doing? How you doing, man? Let's see. Right, right hand by Nicholson. Trying to get himself to go together here. Right hand by Nicholson. Guy coming in with a right hand. Right hand by Nicholson. He's tying up, a uh, guy, I should say, tying up Nicholson. It's the ropes. Every Bill Clancy separates him in the final seconds of the eighth round. Nicholson. I don't want to say Nicholson looks confused, but he's having a tough time dealing with this uh, forward pressure of uh, Mike Guy. Yeah, with, with Guy, the pressure Mike Guy is doing. Is he's throwing punches and, and, and quantities, and, and, and they might not be uh, very effective, but they, they they are keeping Nicholson off balance, like you said. And with Nicholson being off balance, he's starting to look a little. He's even if he's not confused, he's starting to look confused. And when you look confused, your opponent thinks that he has you the upper hand, and that's what's going on right now. Getting ready for the ninth round. Don't forget, join us for our post-fight wrap-up show. Immediately following this contest. Yeah, we'll still be here. It is about uh, almost 1.30 a.m. Eastern time here. <laughs> We're still going to be here try to get through a post-fight wrap-up show if we can. <laughs> I just say thank goodness I don't have to work tomorrow. Anyway, or later on today. Anyway. Right hand by Nicholson. Right hand by Guy. In close, Nicholson pushes Guy away. Left hand by Guy. He tangles once again. Referee Bill Clancy separates him.
The left hand by Gade Tang once again. <clears throat> oh, good left hand by Guy that time. Right hand by Guy, left hand. I got it. Nick, guy coming forward. Nicholson just hanging on. Please. Right hand coming in. And final minute of the ninth round, scheduled for 10. Left hand by Nicholson. Right hand. And Guy feeling more and more confident as the ninth round goes on. Now Nicholson trying to throw some shots. He's finally got a little distance. And get ready to... Uh, Toward the final stages of this bout. And Guy again pushing Nicholson up against the ropes. Trying to throw right hands. He's smothering his punches just a little bit. And that may be why he's not uh, getting a clean shot against Nicholson. He did get one in the sixth round and knocked Nicholson down. Only knocked down the fight so far. Head to the final moments of the ninth round, scheduled for 10. And let's see if Mike Guy may be three minutes away from pulling off the upset here. Right hand by Nicholson, the round ends. We hate ready for the 10th round. We're joined real quickly by a gentleman who, much earlier tonight, <laughs> won his first pro bout. Congratulations to Blaze Fiedel Hernandez. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Yeah, so good unanimous decision win tonight. Uh, did some, some quality things. What about your, how would you set your performance tonight? Uh, I mean, I would, I always consider my performance as like a, a C or a B. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no perfection in anything that you do. It's the uh, pursuit of perfection, which you'll never achieve, which is why we love boxing so much. Yeah, definitely. No question about it. So right. what was the difference in, in this fight that you've noticed in this fight and in, in your first fight? So a lot of things in my first fight and uh, in this fight uh, was in my first fight, uh, I didn't realize like how much a full-time job like just kind of took the energy out of you. Being an active duty Navy, um, I actually had to go to work the morning of the fight, um, and then for a couple hours, and then come back, and then try to you know rest, recuperate, and uh, rehydrate. So it, I really didn't realize like how much of that it really took away from me. But uh, you know, all all respect to my opponent in my first fight. You know, I learned a lot, and I want to thank him for the experience that I had. Um, no disrespect at all. I, I really appreciate that. Um, but this fight, I felt so much more relaxed, so much more at home in the fight. Uh, just, I, I just had a, it was a better headspace. I had a lot more rest, and um, I, I, I just, I can't thank enough for my, my coaching staff. So, okay. yeah. All right, sound good enough. Let me call this tenth round. We'll get right back to you. Okay, okay. stay with us. Just a second. Blaze Fila Hernandez joining us here in the tenth and final round. As uh, DeMond Nicholson really having a tough one against uh, Mike Guy of Sacramento, California. Mike Guy coming in close. Trying to land shots in close. Left hand by Guy. Nicholson pretty much on his back, on, on retreating throughout the second half of the contest. We'll see that goes to his detriment here. His right hand by Guy. And left hand missing there by Nicholson. Nicholson moving to his left. Left hand by Guy. And Guy found a way to get inside Nicholson and really kind of negate his offense. Heading to the final minute of the final round. 
Nicholson clipped the guy with the right hand there. But the uh, guy came back. And guy just grew with confidence for the second half of this bout. Starting with the knockdown in the sixth round. Another right hand by Guy. Guy again pressuring Nicholson throughout. And left hand by Guy. And a big right hand by Guy. I think he may have just missed that by hand. Just missed it. There's a left hand by Nicholson. Left hand by Guy. There's a left hand by Guy. And Guy pressuring, just waiting for his time. Left hand by Guy. Final seconds, final round. Guy with a right hand. Guy missing that left hand there. He's awkward. And who knows, but now he scored the upset. Ooh, very interesting. We're back with Blaze Fiedler Hernandez. Big win tonight. And you're active, Navy. Thank you for your service. Well, I appreciate you guys so yeah. much. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I work at Arlington Cemetery. I'm a tour guide over there now. Oh, okay. So, so uh, we do. So, uh, we I would go uh, Wreath Across America every single time. Oh yeah, open. okay. Yeah, yeah. So me and uh, every single time that that's open, we all, I always make sure I pay my respects to the people that came before me. So. Definitely, no question about that. But how have you been able to balance that with your boxing, your pro boxing now? So actually, interesting enough. The day of my first professional fight last October was mm-hmm. the last day of my active duty service. Okay. So I transitioned to the reserves. Oh, you reserves, okay. Yeah, I became full-time time college student uh, to GI Bill. Um, and uh, one of the big things that I said tonight was I wanted to give a lot of props to the VFW. Because the VFW really helped me transition. There was really a, uh, a period of time which I became, you know, very... There was like a slump. I don't know. You know, you can call it depression or, or kind of a lull uh, between coming off of active duty service um, and really integrating into the civilian world um, because you don't have that person being like, hey, you got to do X, Y, and Z today. You know, be here at this time, be here at this. Nobody, there's there's nobody there at all except for, hey, you got to go to college today. It's right. like, all right, cool. And you, so there's like that sense of like lull and kind of loss. Mm-hmm. But uh, the VFW, when I, when I joined the VFW, um, back in December, they really Veterans of Foreign War. Yeah, Veterans of Foreign War. Um, to all the vets out there, if you guys do not know about that and you guys qualify, please join and help the VFW. I promise they give you back just as much as you put in. It's a fantastic organization, and they are the number one supporters um, and advocacies of vets, as well as active duty service members. So. Fantastic. Where are you in school, by the way? Uh, so I'm going to University of Maryland Global Campus. Okay. Um, and I'm studying for cyber warfare and networking. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And I also look like notice you. You look like you train change trainers then. Uh, or oh, what location are you training? At? So I'm still training. I'm training at Kenilworth uh, Rec Center. Okay. Um, I ended up. Uh, I did uh, change trainers. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Andre Robin. I know he had to go to uh, to finish uh, Jared Swift Hurts camp. Okay. So he was gone for like a month and a half during this entire fight camp. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he's like, hey, you know, Coach Jay. Why don't you, you know, train uh, Blaze while I'm while I'm gone? Mm-hmm. And uh, me and Coach Jay, we were really, really cool. He taught me a lot. He, you know, he'd take extra time out to show me stuff, and it just ended up working out that way. Yep. So, and, and I really, you know, I still respect both coaches, and I appreciate both of them for what they give me. Um, Andre Robbins still a big part of my family. Like that's never gonna go away. Uh, he's been with me since um, I first started being an amateur boxer, and uh, I, you know, I'm not from Maryland originally. I'm from California, so um, having him part of my family that's really important. To me, so. Fantastic. You signed with Jetter now? Yes, I did sign with Tony Jetter. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Yes. Congratulations, please. Break down. Thank appreciate you so it. much. Thank appreciate you guys. Thank you for your service as well. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Skip the. Um, we're still waiting for the official decision of this bout, and as soon as we get that, get that announced, we're getting back to this Mom Jones game right now. We have no more guests here as we will transition to our post fight wrap up show. Brought to you by Real Time Pain Relief and DevilSpears.com. First, the official decision of the judges here from ring announcer Discombobbing Jones. This should be very interesting, no question about it. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a wellness round of applause to both our Ring Warriors here at our main event. And Paul here at Grand Royal Casino. We have a split decision. Judge Kenny Chavalier scored it 95 to 94 for Nicholson. Judge Dave Braslow scored it 96 93 for Guy. And Judge Steve Rado scored it 95 to 94. The winner by split decision. Still the best at it. So DeMond Nicholson, despite the knockdown, hangs on and wins a 10-round split decision. Some, foul, some folks booing the decision here tonight at Live Casino, but DeMond Nicholson, 23, 4, and 1, 20 KOs. My guy, got to be disappointed. He's 12, 5, and 1, 5 KOs. Now, we do transition into our post fight ever show. We have the brand new WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Fairweight Champion. He's Jordan Short Dog White, a very impressive seven round TKO tonight over Ronaldo Solis. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, thank you. Okay, what was the key for the bout for you? The jab, keeping the jab in his face, and um, sticking to the game plan. When, when did you know you hurt him? Uh, I knew I had him hurt the first round. The first round, I knew I could hurt him. Uh, we was coming into the fight uh, basically. We wanted to show I, we wanted to show the fans what we made of. You know, um, everybody knows Short Dog can get in there and knock somebody out. Uh, we wanted to show them that that we can go southpaw, we can go conventional. Uh, I knew I had him hurt the first round. Um, prior to that round, prior about the fourth round, I went southpaw. I had him I had him hurt. I hit him with a, a hard left hand. I had him hurt then too. Um, we were just basically um, focused on breaking them down and getting to the point where, you know, he couldn't take it no more. And that's what we got to today. Mm -hmm. You said normally, was, normally I've seen you fight southpaw before, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, what made you change up? Well, usually, I, like you said, I fight conventional, but uh, I, we, we've been working on it a lot in the gym. Mm -hmm. I actually, I write with my left hand, so okay. I'm, 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 ambidextrous, I'm so. ambidextrous. So, you know, I, I write with my left hand, but I kick with my right foot. I got you. So, you know, um, it's definitely natural to me. So um, we've been, like I said, we've been working on it a lot in the gym, and we've been perfecting it and sparring. So it came out to me, to me in the fight. You know, uh, coach called a call. He said, "Go southpaw and uh, shoot your left hand." I went southpaw, shot my left hand, and and, and it worked. Since this, since this bout right here was like under the WBC banner. Well, how do you uh, see yourself progressing as far as fighting for a championship, or even moving your way up to get a ranking? Oh uh, man. Like I tell everybody else, man, uh, whatever God got in store for me, that's what's going to happen. You know, um, it's God's plan. You know, uh, we definitely got a great management crew. And uh, with this management crew, I think we can, we're taking it to the top. But like I said, once again, it's God's plan. Well, the, uh, the punch that got him out of there, the left. Um, the left hand, uh, basically, like I said, we was, uh, the, 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 um, the plan was to come in here and break him down. We had him broken down to the point where you know he couldn't take anymore. You know he was he was a, a, a great a great fighter, a young fighter um, that, that that can definitely take some heat. He took a lot of heat in there and uh, a lot of heat that I didn't think he would take. You know, but uh, he took the heat and we kept it pushing. And like you said, like I said, we we hit him with the left hand and he was to the point where he couldn't take anymore. So, you know, we, we did our job. We broke him down. We did exactly what we were supposed to do. Where did you see yourself improving from your last fight? Where did I see myself? Yeah. What's, oh, what's man. My most improved point is actually being patient instead of going in there and trying to kill somebody. Uh, boxing is about skills, you know, 80% mental. And, you know, I, I, definitely, I definitely commend myself tonight for being – mentally focused and, and stand sticking to the game plan no matter whether he was out or he wasn't out you know some people come in and get somebody out and shoot they low and they they don't have enough to get through the rest of the fight so that's what we was definitely focused on if we get him hurt keep breaking him down if he if, when he gonna go when he want to go don't force nothing so your first belt hopefully of many how does it feel oh it feels great man we we moving on we moving our way up man it definitely feels great a great accomplishment 
like like uh like discolated Bobby discolated uh this Bobby Lady Jones said the first of many you know yeah so yep. uh man we locked in man we we gonna get straight back in the camp and get back to working into the next fight. Who are you? Are you promoted by anybody in particular? Nope, we promoted by I'm promoted by myself. My okay. dad's my manager. Okay. And you know we uh we we, we been, any promoters coming at you? Um we were. We were with Al Heyman but we we uh we signed out to the contract. Dad mm-hmm. Yes sir. They asked us who we with. Who we with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, promotional team, any particular promotional group that you with? We 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 independent, black owned. <laughs> Independent, black owned. Mm-hmm. So no, no. <laughs> Final question: Six straight win after that loss to Adam Lopez. Along with the patience, what else did you discover after those those bout, after that bout? Uh, patience, definitely work on work on. Uh, I definitely came in shape. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I got an older, more stable mind. You know, my mm-hmm. mind is definitely more stable. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, um, you know, I, I did. I wasn't really committed to the game as I was supposed to, but now I'm I'm 100% committed, and I I, I think I'm the best at the game. We're gonna, right. Adam Lopez, we're going to see you soon. All right. <laughs> I'm 22. 22, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Adam Lopez age when I fought him, and I was right. 18. 18, that's right. You work out at a particular gym? Uh, me and my dad train at our, our own facility at, in Waldorf. Okay. We train, at, we train at home. All right, good enough. Jordan Short Dog White, the brand new WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Fairway Champion. Congratulations once again, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, good enough. Hey, how you hey, hey, doing? All right. Congratulations, sir. Big win tonight for you as well. Your thought. What um what made you know what made you be so aggressive in the first round like you were? Um, I know he tried he tried to be aggressive first. Yeah, he, well, how he, you make that a quick yeah, adjustment? He came out real fast at me, so I just I try to make him fight at my pace. So then once once I found out that he ain't really have no strength to really touch me for real, I just walked him down to use my jab and stay stay with my jab and touch him. What, did you find out it was it was easier to do that? You yeah, it was, shot it was way. Yeah, I, I I knew I ain't think I didn't look past him, but I knew that I felt strong coming into this fight, and I knew I was fo- I was too focused, so I knew I was gonna have a good outcome of this fight. Now this, this is still early in the year. How many times did you plan on fighting? What? Uh, well, they told me I had about I probably had seven more fights this year. This year, Ooh, oh, yeah. okay. Wow. okay. Uh, that's okay. right, right, so right. with that many fights, what are you planning on? What 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 what, what platform are you plan on being? Active? Actually, like, actually, let's say like two years. Two years, uh, two years. I want to I want to be fighting for a belt in two years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or, or less, or less. Okay. Okay. All right. Good enough. Appreciate it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Jay. Yeah. Jay, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. So you came back after after a little lengthy time after your first bout. Mm-hmm. What what was the situation? They were just trying to get things going here. Uh, we was trying to find a car. We was trying to find the right car, but uh, no other promoters was. They wasn't. They wasn't adjusting to how we how we really work. So we just mm-hmm. waited for Tony. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good enough. Good enough. And you with? Are you with him? No, well, I'm not. I'm not, not signing Tony. Him. Okay. Good enough. Yeah. All right. Jay. <laughs> Oh, no, my one. Yes, first round TKO, 121 in the first round. Jay Stansel wins that big bout. Congratulations, thank you, thank sir. You, thank, you, thank, you. thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. There you go. All right. Well, this has been a long night. No question about it. But uh, ended with a somewhat a surprise a little bit, just in the fact that Demon Nicholson in the main event tonight uh, won by split decision in a bout that, quite frankly, he did not look all that great. He had, he had a tough uh, tough road to hold in that one. In the second half of the bout, and then he got knocked down in the sixth round, beautiful left hand by my guy, and really was retreating the rest of the round. But I guess the ref, two of the judges may have thought that Demon may have um, got enough points in the first round, first half of the round to come back and win. As we talk about that, we're going to talk a little bit more about another winner here, the new Maryland State Cruiserweight champion, Slick Nick Kisner, along with his trainer Brady Bulldog Sensabaugh. Nick Kisner, congratulations. A uh, an exceptional fight. He wants to see what won. Oh, he, he switched up. Okay, there it is. 
But uh, he's catching us. Okay, he's editing the editing, editing yeah. the Bucks too. Yep. Congratulations, Nick. Great win. Uh, what was the key in the win for you? The box and just be smart. You mm-hmm. know, I just wanted the box and be smart tonight. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, no matter what I do or what I try to do, at the end of the day, you know, I box better mm-hmm. than anything. And I knew with Sam, with his experience, I knew if I took him in late, it would be harder for him to I adjust like to the 10 rounds. And yeah. I trained extremely, extremely hard for this fight. Like, mm-hmm. my last two fights, I was 221. I came in tonight at 190. Yeah. So 31 pounds lighter than my last two fights. That's the lowest way I've been since I was 15 years old. Like, that's mm-hmm. how hard I worked. Because, look, here's the way I look at it. After I lost the Danny Kelly fight, a fight that I believe I should have won, mm-hmm. the way I look at it is, if I ever lose a fight again you know I don't want it to be because I didn't do it myself or right. you know, have any regrets you get what mm. I'm saying like it just that was a horrible feeling mm. was not going to let that happen again so I really gave him my all coming in tonight and if I lost then hey there was no regrets at least I gave him my all right. you know what, what was your game plan what, what I thought it was since you I think I was thinking that you knew that he did haven't been 10 rounds before he did a lot of stuff in t- at 6 rounds or less you to take him into the let him punch himself out in the early rounds, and you let take him into the deeper rounds yeah. and turn up the pressure. Yeah. That was my that was my thing. That, yeah, that was pretty much it. I stayed back a little bit more boxing only because boxing actually worked for me a little bit better than I thought it was going to. Mm-hmm. I actually thought I was going to have a little bit of problems boxing, but obviously mm-hmm. I didn't. Okay. You know, I had a lot of good rounds. I personally had eight two in rounds. You know, I just really thought my boxing was on point. Could have did a little better, but at the end of the day, it was still a good performance, and I got the big win. And I want to thank Brady Sensible. My father uh, was not able to train me for this fight because of certain situations, and Brady stepped up for the last, the whole training camp, and he trained me the whole way, and this is his first big win as a coach, too, and, you know, we, we did agree tonight. We did. And Brady Sensible joins us, and I'll get your thoughts on how Nick did tonight. I, you know, I, I graded, graded about a B plus. I mean, uh, he listened to everything I said in training camp. Uh you're talking about a guy that had probably the most embarrassing moment in his, in his whole career mm-hmm. a couple months ago. Right. And he was 221. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, he asked me to, to help DK Danny in, in training camp for this fight. And I, I kind of actually stayed back until mm-hmm. I heard that Danny couldn't train. Mm-hmm. I told him to retire. Yeah. I said, you can't be fighting unless your mind's right. Mm-hmm. So he called me and said, listen, Danny, you know, Danny can't train me for this fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... and, and Danny trained me, mm-hmm. and and that when the general goes down, the soldier steps up. There you go. And even though I'm I'm at the headbangers and I'm training, I took time off mm-hmm. of the headbangers and I trained Nick. And and let me tell you, Gary, this mm-hmm. boy bust his butt mm-hmm. for this camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, he listened to everything uh, I said. The game plan was this: mm-hmm. first first uh, four rounds, box, box, box. Right. Uh, if we have to take a round off around the fifth or the sixth. And we really thought we could back him up after the sixth round because we really thought he was going to be exhausted. Mm-hmm. Credit to Sam and credit to his conditioning coach. He was in better shape than we thought. Okay. Uh, so in, in between the rounds, I said, you know what? Let's let's stick to boxing. We're winning this fight. It's mm-hmm. clear we're winning this fight. Let's stick to boxing. Let's not fix anything that's not broken. Mm-hmm. And he listened to everything I said. He really busts his butt. Of course, there's stuff we, we, we need to work on. But uh, Nick really, I, I'm so proud of him. I am so proud of him. Uh, and I know hearing you throughout the years, you're not a big fan of switching. Right. And one of the things we worked on was let's stay right-hander for the most part. We mm-hmm. didn't see him switch no, much. Not much. Not uh, much. And, and that was part of the game plan, too. I even talked to Ronnie, coach of uh, Sam, mm-hmm. and he said we were, we were really planning on him fighting Southpaw a lot. Oh, and wow. I, I kind of knew that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, one of the, you know, stay right-hander. And, and, and he found success throughout the fight. Yes, uh, you know, I had an 8-2 or 7-3, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but uh, I'm so proud of him, man. And I noticed that the, uh, you said you were going to campaign for 175. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how soon is that? Or are you going to take some more fights to cruise away before you end up? Or are you going to gradually drop down? Gradually, just keep dropping down. You know, mm-hmm. um, somebody, uh, the other reporters asked me, and I told him, hey, I went from 221 to 190 for this fight. That's 31 pounds. Mm-hmm. I'm only 15 now away from hit 75. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously it's not going to be by, you know, a month from now. I'm going to have to keep working, get back in the gym. Yeah, I'll be back in the gym by next week. You know, just going light but working again. And I'll just keep dra- gradually trying to drop. One thing I've done good with myself is I've actually gotten my eating habits better. Mm-hmm. If I didn't, there was no way I was going to make 190 pounds. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that people say, how hey, we know you're going to get in shape? <laughs> if I make 190, yeah. I promise I'm in shape. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's what and I was that, able to that do. That was him. a mistake, I think, from uh, Sam's, yes. Sam's uh, camp. Uh, by making him make 190, 
You forced him to, to work hard. And I told him from the get-go, we, we got to take this weight cut serious. Mm-hmm. Gary, I've seen this man struggle to make 200. Mm-hmm. This man really didn't struggle. I mean, we, we had to strip down, but the only reason we stripped down was we were pound under on our scale. Mm-hmm. We, we checked our weight here, and we were actually eight ounces over. Okay. So we, we had about two hours until the weigh-in. Mm-hmm. So I just told him to spit. But he, was, he really didn't cut for this fight. Like, he didn't kill himself. Mm-hmm. I've seen this guy almost die, make 200. And that just shows you how much he took this fight serious. He was so embarrassed of this last fight. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the, the key points of this training camp was to get him right mentality. Right. The old slick Nick, the dominant uh, amateur that mm-hmm. everybody was like, who is this guy? The guy that became awesome, right. you know, the Lippian. That's the slick Nick that I think we saw highlights of here. Okay. He's not all the way there yet, mm-hmm. but we're going to get get him there. He's there. It's all about mentality with Nick. Mm-hmm. Nick, Nick Nick came with the right mentality. So okay. now since you got the right mentality, what's the new game plan for you guys now? Just keep working. We'll take fight by fight. You know, if we feel like there's a different... One thing about me, obviously, I can do it all. I can box. I can bang. You know, I can fight on the inside. That's what people don't realize about me, I don't think. You know, and obviously, it's credit to my amateur experience. But, you know, depending on the fight, what we feel the game plan is better for, then we'll start sticking to that, you know? Just one fight at a time, I guess. Mm-hmm. Good. Good job, man. All right, Nick Kisner, Thank you, Lawrence, Brady Sense Bob. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you, Appreciate it. Oh, love you. Same here, man. You. Love you too, guys. All right, guys. All right, great to see, see you guys. Great to see you guys. Thank you so you much. Too, man. Good, Good job. job. Man. Slick Nick Kisner and Brady Sense Bob. He was doing exactly what I thought. That's Nick Kisner winning unanimous decision over yeah. Sam Crossett. And big key was again that that I think they took him in the deep, deep crossing the deep water there. Other bouts on the card tonight. Uh, yeah. Malik Lofton losing by unanimous decision to Charles Clark of Dallas, Texas. Um, uh, Clark wins that bout by scores of 58 56, 59 55, and 60 54. Malik Lofton and Charles Clark both 3 and 2, 2 KOs. Brandon Chambers wins a four round split decision over Christopher Haney for the third time. Third bout, or third win, I should say. Uh, Chambers wins by 40 36, both round across the board. And 39-37 for uh, Haney uh, by Eric Irizarry. Uh Brandon Chambers now 3-0-1 with two KOs. Christopher Haney 0-6-2. Anthony Williams, third round TKO win. A.J. Williams, should say, uh, out of uh, Clarksville, Maryland. He scored a uh, third round TKO over Michael Brock Willis. 220 of the third round. A.J. Williams, we are. It's 5-1, 3 KOs. Brock Wills, 2-7, 1 KO. Maurice Winslow winning by fourth round disqualification over Dwayne Williams. Uh, Winslow, uh, Williams' uh, excessive holding led to that uh, disqualification victory for uh, Maurice Winslow. Maurice Winslow now fighting out of Odington, Maryland. He is now 3-1, and 1, 1 KO. Dwayne Williams, 1-6-1, one, 1, 1 KO. And Ibrima Jawara. Winning a four-round unanimous decision win over Philip Davis. Sabrina Jawara now 4-1, one, one, one KO. Philip Davis 2-3-1. Three, and one. And Blaze Fiddler Hernandez, we talked to him earlier, scoring a four-round unanimous decision win over Everett Hatler. Fiddler wins his first bout. He's 1-0-1, one, oh, and, one, and Hatler's 1-2. And, and that's the card here tonight from, from Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. I don't know if we're going to get Demond Nicholson. That was a tough bout for him, and I... I think a lot of people did not think that he won this bout. Uh, again, as we talked about just before our interview with Nick Kizzer and Brady Sensabaugh, that uh, really in the second half of the bout, Nicholson all, all but stopped punching up in the final stages of the, of the last couple of rounds. And uh, I thought God did enough, maybe, maybe pull it out or very least get a draw. Yeah, because I, when I saw it, I saw it that since the knockdown in the, it was in the, early in the sixth, Guy had Nicholson um, backing up because he's pre- he stepped up the pressure now, right. you know. Because once a fighter sees another fighter where you you think he had, even though Nicholson wasn't really hurt, mm-hmm. he got, he he's just knocked down. You still at the, his, your opponent always think that he's he's has the upper hand and he right. puts more pressure, and that's what he was doing. Guy was just mm-hmm. putting more pressure on him, and when he put more pressure on him, he got more aggressive. Mm-hmm. You know, he was in close, he was smothering Nicholson's punches because Nicholson couldn't get off any really clean shots. Right. And, and that's basically, I thought that's how he pulled at least the second half of the, mm-hmm. of the bout off, I thought. Mm-hmm. No question about it. So, DeMond Nicholson wins the main event tonight. He raised record to 23-3-1 with 20 KOs. And Mike Guy falls to 12-5-1 with 5 KOs. And that will do it here tonight. 
from Live Casino Hanover, Maryland, New Hall in the Live Casino. Great perform, great uh, venue here. Congratulations to Tony and Kristen Jetta of Jetta Promotions and then matchmaker Nick Tyberry. Of course, lots to see and do coming up in the next couple of weeks. Of course, uh, this coming tonight, I should say now, uh, the Golden Gloves, the preliminaries of Golden Gloves, the last preliminary week for the Golden Gloves is coming up tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, then the preliminary, the uh, semifinals, March 7th, as well as um, March 7th, March 13th, and March 21st. And then I'm followed by the uh, regional championships, uh, actually the Washington Championship, April 7th, regional championships on April 21st. So a lot to talk about here. Of course, some other big cards we've talked about throughout the evening. Coming up in the next couple months, so stay with us right here on the Box on Butway Podcast Network. More information on all those cards. Our coverage, uh, live coverage of Jetta Promotions card from Live Casino in, Arnold, in, um, in Hanover, Maryland, brought to you by Real Time Pain Relief. Go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief, get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief, the official pain relief of the 2020 Daytona 500. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com, she has great weight loss tips. Great jewelry and great training methods at Deborah, D E B R A Spears.com. For Juan Marshall, I'm Gary Digital Williams saying so long from Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. And always remember, keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. Thanks for listening, everyone. Take care.